Ellie and I are in Ravello, Italy, doing props and costumes for John Huston's Beat the Devil, a production that everyone involved with look back on with the fondness one usually reserves for cleaning out your urethra with a twig. The one who had it the second worst was Truman Capote, who, because we started production without a finished script, was literally writing pages the night before John shot them. The number one spot went to Bogey, who lost most of his teeth in a car accident and a chunk of his money when the movie flopped. Urethra? Twig. Anyway, one night Capote finishes his pages early and he joins me and Beverly at the local dive bar. La Linga del Diablo, the devil's tongue. Anyway, Beverly has some relatives who live in Alabama on her mother's side, so they spent the entire evening comparing notes on the family's cornbread recipes. For the record, Capote's aunts had the better one. It was moister and cakier. Just then, this American sailor on leave comes over and starts giving Capote the business. And even by the standards of the 50s, the gay slurs were agrarious. Finally, the guy leans over into Capote's face and says, I bet you want to know what my dick tastes like. Capote looks him in the eye, grabs him by the bait and tackle, and says, Sure, after I roast it on an open flame first. And then he twists so hard that I wince. Here's the thing about Capote most people don't know about. He was a bulldog. Yeah, he had kind of a fey air about him. But if you provoked him, he would mess you up big time. This was a man who the previous night had beaten Bogey at arm wrestling twice. Anyway, the sailor drops to the floor and his friends, all four of them, stand at attention, ready to rumble. I stand up to give Capote a hand, but he waves me off, saying, It's okay, Marty. You'll just get in my way. Within minutes, Capote had made short work of the sailors, and as they lay bleeding at his feet, he bellowed to the crowd, Anyone else want a piece of me? Now, granted, given Capote's voice, Bellowing is a relative term, but still, no one chose to take him up on his offer of a piece. I later told John about this, and he laughed himself sick. Johnny loved a good Donnybrook, and he was sorry to have missed it. Well, we finished the movie. It sinks like a stone, and we all get on with our lives. Years later, I'm in Ravello by myself on a nice holiday, and I come across that same bar, which has now become a gay bistro named La Primavera Romana, the Roman Spring. And over the bar portion of that bistro was a beautiful oil painting of Capote striking a blow for gay rights while striking several of the blows elsewhere. The menu was a mixture of Italian and American Southern, and wouldn't you know it, they used Capote's aunt's cornbread recipe. And it was still moist and cakey. <laughs>